Moving into six here, you begin with standard form. Um, what we want to do is convert it into vertex form. We're then going to sketch a picture with it. Okay, so to convert to vertex form, obviously the main thing you need to know is what the vertex is. And to find the vertex from standard form, we use opposite of B over 2A to create it. Okay, that is going to help you figure out the X value to the vertex. So your B value is 6. That means that you're going to have a negative 6. has to be the opposite. Divided by 2 times 1 half. 2 times 1 half is going to equal 1, which means that you get 6. Okay, so you definitely have the vertex at 6. And in fact, on the graph, what that means is that my axis of symmetry is going to be at negative 6. So I could go ahead and add that if I wanted to. All right, now to get the rest of the, the vertex, what we do is you just plug the 6 in. You're going to take the 1 half, so right here, 1 half, you're going to multiply by six, negative 6 squared. You're going to have the 6 times negative 6 and the plus 18, which will give you 36, positive 36 cut in half is 18. You're going to get a minus 36 and a plus 18, which all turns out to be 0. So your coordinate for the, the vertex is going to be at negative 6, 0. You get a point here. And then we can take that vertex and we can write our equation. So in parentheses, you're going to have the x plus 6. The left shift is going to be a plus. That gets squared. Your k value is 0, so you don't need to write anything here. But if you did get another number, just tack it on to the end and that'd be fine. The a value, convenient for us, is the exact same thing as the a value from standard form which should also be true for intercept form as well. They all have the same A value. So you don't need to do any real work on that part. You just take it and place it here. That is your equation. This is your vertex. Your axis of symmetry, we ended up getting that one along the way. That is x equals negative 6. Make sure you can write that as an equation, though. The x-intercepts. Well, uh, if your vertex is already sitting, sitting on the x-axis, then that is your x-intercept. You don't have anything different here. But in many of the problems, you'll, your vertex will be at a different location, and you, know, you might get like two intercepts, assuming you don't have any imaginary stuff going on here. You'd have two intercepts, and you could get that by factoring, um, or you could do quadratic formula. Hopefully, factoring would work so that you're actually able to plot like solid points. So, um, OK, the graph. It is going to open up, because you got a positive leading coefficient. You got that one half going on. The y-intercept's not going to help much because that's going to be 18 if you plug in zeros here. It's going to be way up at the top there. So we've got to come up with a different plan. Sometimes just plugging in values is a good way to go about it. Um, what I did suggest in my classes was if you have a fractional a value, what I like to do is make the table of all the squared numbers. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. I can go out to 5 if I need. But then those numbers squared will be 1. 4, uh, they give you a 9, and a 16. And then what I do is I start multiplying these, all of these numbers by the 1 half, and I look for stuff that's good, like 1 times 1 half is, is 1 half, and I, I want to avoid fractions, so I'm not going to do that. But if I multiply the 4 by 1 half, I get a 2. 9 is going to give me a decimal, I don't want that. 16 I can divide by 2, so multiply by 1 half and you get an 8. And what that does is it creates these little patterns that I can use that tell me how to travel from the vertex to other points. Eight. Okay, so that one, so I don't need this one, didn't help. That didn't help. And then from here, what it tells is from the vertex, I can go two units to the right if I travel two units up. So the parent function would have been a two and a four, out two up four. But with our one half compression, it's gonna be a two and a two. So that's gonna give me a point here. Then the three didn't really help. But if I go up four units, I could go up eight units. Now that's back from the vertex. So I go over four units, go up two, four, six, eight. And that starts giving me enough points I can use. You then reflect it over, and to the best of your ability, connect it. And by the way, when you graph these on the test, make sure that your points are nice and solid, that even if your line is a little bit off, and I can look at these points and say, well, you know what you're doing, and we're good. Even the picture's not great. All right, number seven. Um, seven and eight, we're going to look at 
the focus and directrix type problems. For seven, these are problems, these equations, even though it doesn't say it in the text here, these are equations that will be located at the origin. So the vertex is going to be at zero, zero. There's no shifting that's happening in the y and the x. And that's happening. That's going to happen in eight. So all these are at the origin. Okay, what you should start with is just kind of get your bearings straight. Um, okay, so what we're looking for is the focus and the direction. I want to remind myself that's what I'm doing. The focus is a point, the direction is a line. But I'm going to start to get my bearings straight by just imagining a picture. So let that be the x and the y um, uh, coordinate axes. Okay, your graph is going to go through the origin, but it can either open up, open down, you can open right, open to the left. Because this says y squared, that means it's open either to the right or to the left. But because you have a negative 16, it tells you that you're going to be opening to the left. And once we know that, we can say the focus is on that side too. It's going to be inside of it, and the directrix will be on the other side. Both of those being an equal distance away from the center here, also called P. Now P, let me rewrite this way, 4P is going to be equal to this coefficient negative 16. So if we divide by 4, we get that our p-value is negative 4. For the most part, you just need to know that it is 4. Because if you draw the picture, I'm not sure why I separated like that, but if you draw the picture, <laughs> take that out so it doesn't look like it's the other problem. So if you draw in the picture, uh, the focus, you know it's going to be p units that way. Okay, so your focus is See, that's zero, so we're going back four. So you got negative four, zero. And then your directrix is a line, and it's going to be x equals four. Those are your answers. Okay, going on to the other one. Uh, one of the changes up at the beginning is that you do need to make sure that it's in the right structure so you can pick out these things. So the negative 12, uh, 1 12 shouldn't be over here. It actually needs to be the other side. So I'm going to change that and write it as x squared is equal to negative 12y. You don't lose the negative, but you do get a reciprocal and moves to the other side. The p-value then that goes with this is going to be a negative 3, because you'll just divide by 4, and I'll go ahead and have that ready. All right, so coordinate system. We have an x squared, which means it opens up or it opens down. Being that it's a negative 3, it's going to open to the bottom side. So it's going to look like this meaning your focus is down there, and there's your directrix. And using your p-value, you can write those equations. So your focus is going to be at 0, negative 3, 3 units down. Your directrix is going to be up, y equals 3. Now, a lot of those ideas are going to get applied when we get to here. We're just going to be in a different location when we do it. And what we're doing is writing an equation, OK? All right, what we'll start with, like in the others, is kind of get your bearings, figure out where we are. Okay, we're not going to be centered at the vertex here. Um, the focus is going to be at 3, negative 5. Let's see if I can do this in this little picture here. So you're going to go out 3 units, then you're going to go down 5 units. 3, negative 5. So I'm just going to estimate it's over here. And the parabola is either going to wrap around it like that, or it's going to wrap around in this direction. Because the directrix is y equals 0, which happens to be the x-axis. I'll just highlight it there. That tells me that the shape of my parabola is going to be going more in that direction. Wrapping around the focus and then um, bending kind of around where, like, going by the uh, directrix. So that's your shape. That is going to give you a general template of what we want. Because it is opening down, we're going to use an x-squared. Okay, we're also going to have a negative 4p times y. Now, all that would be true if this is centered at the vertex. Look how it looks there. All that kind of matches up what we did. Because it's actually going to be at a different location, which is here, that's where your, your vertex is, we're going to need to insert some values around the x and the y. Um, well, I'll leave... Yeah, I'll leave it as P for you. Okay, so we're going to intro. We're going to have some numbers that we bring in here, which is going to be the vertex. So the vertex, um, trying to squeeze these numbers in here. 
It is definitely going to be at a 3 because everything's going to be lined up with that x. And I just wrote x finished to be a 3. And then you want to split the difference between your focus and your directrix. And since um, our directrix is at 0 and our focus is at negative 5, that's going to give you a 2.5. Um, actually being negative 2.5 because it's down. So that's your vertex. And in addition to that, what we get in this problem at least, because of where the directrix is, is that is your p-value. Your p-value is 2.5. Okay. So I'm going to go to my equation. I'm going to put a minus 3 because it's the opposite. I'm going to put a plus 2.5 because it's the opposite. And you know I had that p-value in there. Well, if I just multiply 2.5 uh, times 4, I'm going to get 10. So that's going to be a negative 10. Now when I plugged it in, I was plugging in a negative 2.5 and I already had the negative 4. But the reason my negative was there is because I already knew that this was upside down. Okay, so I don't want to cancel those. It needs to maintain that negative to be in that opening down. So there's a lot of, if I get what the picture is supposed to look like, I can use that to my benefit to write the equation. Okay, so this will be an acceptable answer that you could do. Um, sometimes that gets distributed in. If it does, it's not a big deal, but you could just leave it like this. This is all perfectly fine. Um, the alternative looks like this, though. You'd have the x minus 3 squared. You distribute the negative 10 in, so you get negative 10y. When it distributes to the 2.5, you're going to get a negative 25. So not much difference. Um, I really wouldn't worry about doing that unless like, you're instructed to. So. All right, that is it.